Hey imposters, today we're going to be covering the social sciences on the USMLE. This is a topic that got many test takers nervous when the USMLE announced this in early 2020, so let me take you through what we'll be covering in this series. This is the overview video to a five-part series where we will be covering the four social science competencies listed by the USMLE. Communication and interpersonal skills, professionalism and legal slash ethical issues, systems-based practice and patient safety, healthcare policies, I want us to focus on active learning, so the bulk of these videos are practice questions. I will then end each video with a section called High Yield Munchies, which will summarize all the questions we went through so you can review right before test day and feel prepared. See this little hot spicy pepper? Those are there to remind you to take screenshots for reviewing later. In this overview video, we'll go over percent topic breakdown, resources I used during my dedicated period, and those I reviewed to help build this series, and some other resources you could check out as well what they could ask you on test day, test taking strategies, and uncommon definitions just to get out of the way. My goal for this series is to compile most of the resources out there and make this a hub of knowledge to save you time and focus on more important concepts for the exam. All the listed resources are either linked or listed in the description box, so be sure to check that out as well. So these are the resources I've looked at so you don't have to. The AMBOSS Principles of Medical Law and Quality and Safety sections provides a pretty neat list stemming from the USMLE content outline. There is one Anki deck out there as of right now that covers this AMBOSS section. It's called Let's Get Ethical with 195 cards created in 2020 by these two lovely people on Reddit. We also have another Anki deck called Turn Up to Law and Ethics with 175 cards created by this person, and this deck was created for those of us preparing for Step 2 and Level 2. It's also based on a few resources listed below. USMLE Medical Ethics, the 100 cases you are most likely to see on the exam by Drs. Conrad Fisher and Katerina Oneto, has been a tried and true resource for many students. If you feel like you still need more practice questions after this series, UWorld and AMBOSS, then feel free to glance at this book's practice question section. I don't recommend you to spend time through the text portion, just go straight to the practice question section starting on page 79. The answer and explanation start on page 131. They are not exactly written in USMLE step style, but definitely cover a lot of important concepts tested. The First Aid Step 1 book, pages 265 to 269. I've used this more as an outline to guide these videos, but feel free to glance at First Aid, especially the provided ethical situations on pages 268 to 269. Some people have also suggested the Kaplan lecture notes for the social sciences. I've looked through chapters 12 and 14 and added concepts from there as well. And of course, go through the UWorld social sciences questions and explanations. I do want to mention some resources that come before me that people have also enjoyed. Dr. Randy Neal's YouTube channel, I watched him on my lunch breaks during dedicated period for his biostats and some ethics question approaches. He has a very calming voice and he shares some good test taking strategies as well. Divine Interventions is a podcast geared towards step two. They put out a ethics episode, which is number 123, so you can give that a lesson as well. Dirty Medicine, previously known as Dirty USMLE, also has several videos on ethics, which has been the gold standard for some time. I have not watched the entire one hour video, but I believe there are some discrepancies people have pointed out in the comment section, but this is also a great place for more practice questions. All the mentioned resources are listed in the description box, so feel free to check them out and give them some love. The point of these two slides is not to overwhelm you, but just to show you what are some of the tried and true resources out there. You don't need to watch or read through all of them, but I've linked them in the description box just in case because I know we all have FOMO. I also want to mention that I've only taken step one and will be soon prepping for step two. I understand there has also been an increase of percentage for this section on step two as well. I might upload a follow-up video of anything new I learn about Step 2 Ethics and Communications, but I think this series will also be very helpful for those taking Step 2 soon, as this will build your foundation and cover most of the questions you'll see on exam day. On the exam and on some of the recent feedback, it sounds like there are two to four questions per block that falls into the social sciences. I tried to make this five-part series as complete as possible, but obviously new resources come out and the USMLE can test you on literally anything. But I believe if you watch this series, 
supplemented by the U World Question Bank that everyone uses and you are just a decent human being, you've spoken to patients before, then I think you are absolutely golden to having enough experience and knowledge to tackle the social sciences section on test day. Here is that percentage breakdown. I want you to know there is no need to freak out about the social sciences and say, oh my god, I'm going to fail this test because of all the new tricky social science questions. It's only 6 to 9% of your 280 question exam. That's 16 to 25 questions per test or two to three questions per block. And that was true for my exam and many of my friends. I've also pasted here the breakdown for all the tasks, systems, and disciplines from my score report, which is essentially the same thing as the previous slide, but in a little bit more detail. The USMLE has given us four big competencies and I've added what types of questions they can ask you. I'm not going to read off all of them, but we will go through practice questions in each video to cover these topics. Then remember to refer back to the high yield munchy slide as summary notes closer to test day. Before we do any practice questions, here are some ground rules that are helpful. Don't say what you'll actually say to a patient. Remember this is a examination, a test, not your school's OSCE or CS. They're trying to test you from the ethics core principles. It might be helpful to think how a potential empathic robot might respond. A good example of this is going through the MBME questions. Most of those answers are things you would never ever ever say to a patient, but you gotta choose the best answer out of those horrible choices. Never refer. They want you to be in charge of your patient. You are their physician, so they want you to figure it out on your own. We will cover this through a question when referring is actually okay. Just be a nice human. Don't be rude, judgy, or choose the snappy response. Don't lie, even if you think it's good for your patient. And we will actually cover when you can lie. People can often be between two choices. If you're in that case, choose the ones that allow the patient to talk the most. Those are usually elicited through open-ended questions. Make the patient do most of the talking. Have open discussions with the family and patient. Have that shared decision-making. Think back to the ethics core principles. And lastly, what the heck is the patient here for? What is the chief concern? Are they here for back pain or are they here to get a disability parking pass? Sometimes the question will take you on a loop and addressing the patient's original problem is always a good hint on which choice is correct. I'm not going to give you some convoluted textbook definition of each of the terms, but I'll show you some very easy to understand lingo and some ways to memorize them for test day. I'm just going to rapid fire through these. So autonomy is respect the patient's choices, even if it may harm them. So auto means self, nami means law, so self-law. You got to respect the patient's own laws and principles. Beneficence, do good. What benefits the patient? Beneficence. Non-maleficence is don't do bad. So mal is bad, non is no, so no bad. Justice is be fair and equitable. So just as a reminder, it's different than equality. Equality is giving everyone equal resources or seeing everyone as the same. Equity is giving someone custom resources so everyone plays on the same level. These two pictures are the classic visual representation of these terms. So please be familiar with these for this test and also for the future of medicine and health of our patients. We'll go over these terms through practice questions in the series, but I think there are some terms people might not be immediately familiar with that we'll go through first. So EMTALA is the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. Basically, this law says the ER needs to evaluate all patients for potential emergencies, which is defined as conditions that are endangering their lives. You are not obligated to treat every patient that comes to you. You can end the relationship anytime, but you need to inform the patient or their surrogate decision maker and preferably refer them to someone else. Capacity versus competency of a patient. So competency is determined by a legal team, and you can memorize that by the ease and competency for legal team. Capacity is determined by a doctor through four ways. Does the patient understand what's happening? Do they appreciate how facts are relevant to what's happening? Can the patient reason through these facts and make a decision for themselves? And can the patient communicate their thoughts and what they want? I don't think it's necessary to memorize these four things, but I wanted to add it just to be complete. So decision-making order, after the patient is either not competent or has lost capacity like through dementia or they had a stroke due to a motor vehicle accident, then you look into their advanced healthcare directive. A lower yield fact is that the power of attorney overrides the patient's living will if the POA accurately represents what the patient would want now because that living will could have been created years ago and not be representative of their goals right now. Just think more power means it's more powerful than the living will. 
Next in line is relatives. The mnemonic here is skips. Spouse, kids, parents, and siblings. And I think it's fairly easy to remember that spouse comes before siblings. Last is the ethics committee. If there's absolutely no one you can talk to, this is the time to refer to the ethics committee or their primary care physician. Therapeutic privilege, this is the only time you can quote unquote lie to a patient. This will usually be for psych patients, withholding their diagnosis because it could cause harm to them. Just remember this is special privilege for physicians to lie due to therapeutic reasons. Euthanasia is illegal. The definition of euthanasia is painless killing of a suffering patient, which actually fits into three of these terms. But just remember euthanasia is illegal to perform as a doctor in any setting, whether that's in the ICU, prison, or as a PCP. Physician aid in dying and terminal sedation is legal in some states. PAD is when a large dose of digoxin, morphine, and other drugs are prescribed to patients and they can ingest that at home to die. The law usually requires these patients to only have six months to one year of life expectancy, usually due to a genetic disease, COPD, or cancer. Terminal sedation is usually a term I've heard when talking about executions in prisons. Futile treatment is when no one can force you to prescribe a treatment. If the patient is like, I want you to prescribe me this weight loss medication, you as a physician have the power to say no. But obviously be empathetic and try to get a sense of why they want the meds. Discuss some of the risks and benefits of weight loss meds and offer alternatives. Reportable diseases. If you go down the list of organisms we need to memorize for a step, a lot of them are reportable and it vary state to state. So some of the high yield ones include HIV, STIs, hepatitis viruses, TB, rabies, Neisseria meningitis, food poisoning are the high old ones you need to report. Most likely if the answer offers reporting, you probably have to report it. A minor is defined as anyone under the age of 18. Fun fact, in Mississippi, it's under 21. In Nebraska and Alabama, it's 19, but those would probably not show up on the test. An emancipated minor is a patient under 18 years old, but you basically treat them like an adult because they're either married, have kids, or is in the military. Okay, so those are all the terms we'll cover in this video, and that should put you in a good spot for now, and we'll continue to work on solidifying these and practice questions in the upcoming videos. All right, that's a chicken wrap for this video. Read through the description box to see if you want to use any other resources. Let me know in the comments section if there are any typos, and I'll be happy to update it. Imposter Med is a fairly new channel, and I'm brand new to producing videos and adjusting my audio, so let me know if you enjoyed this video, and feel free to comment on anything you would like for me to cover in the future. This is Imposter Med, and as always, be happy and be kind.